Welcome to Indigo Water Group's online training series. Series training for water and wastewater professionals. I'm going to play the first 15 minutes or so of belt filter presses, uh, and that includes the quiz, which I'll walk through at the end, just to kind of give you an idea how the quizzes work. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to belt filter press theory and operation. I think we're going to go about 90 minutes today, so I'm not planning to take a break in the middle. Although if you're watching the recorded version, feel free to walk away from your computer and take a break anytime you'd like to take a break. This week we are going to talk about belt filter presses, but it is not your only option for dewatering. You can also do centrifuges. Ken Schnars will be here next week to talk about centrifuges. And there are also other alternatives, like the Erie North plant is using a screw press for dewatering. You can also do a plate and frame press, so you have options. Built filter presses are good technology for smaller facilities because you can do all of the maintenance on them yourselves. Centrifuges are a little bit more complicated. Why are we even looking at installing dewatering equipment? Well, the number one reason is so that we can reduce our solids volume. We can dewater after digestion, and that decreases our hauling costs. It removes water so that we can have a more efficient composting operation. And overall, it just reduces the volume to be hauled. If we're going from 2% solids up to 20 or 30% solids, that means we are concentrating that by 10 or 15 times, which means we have to haul 10 or 15 times less. If we are applying to land, we will end up with a heavier product, makes it a little easier to land apply. And if we're going to send stuff to landfill, we have to be able to pass what's called the paint filter test. The paint filter test is a very simple test. It's just a big filter funnel. You put your biosolids in the top, on top of a piece of filter paper, and if liquid comes out the bottom, you cannot send stuff to landfill because they don't want a bunch of excess liquid there. So the dewatering equipment is pretty important and it's all about reducing costs and then meeting requirements for landfill if that's what you're doing. Today we're going to look at belt filter presses and just go through an overview. So we are going to look at all the pieces and parts. A belt filter press uses a combination of gravity filtration and pressure in order to extract the liquid from our finished biosolids that are coming out of the digester. This does require some preconditioning, which means we're going to be adding a polymer and, a, and or a flocculant. We may use one or the other or both. And we are going to get a finished cake, that's what we call the dewatered solids, coming off of the press, typically in the 18 to 25 percent solids range. It is possible to get a higher percentage of solids if you are mixing primary and secondary sludge together in the digester because there will be more grit, it's a little easier to dewater that stuff. And when we put things through the press, we're trying to get a pretty high solids capture. The water that goes through the press, that all the water that was mixed in with those biosolids is going to come back around. We would like that to be as low a solids concentration as possible. And typically filtrate is pretty clean if we're doing our jobs correctly. So we can get 80 to 95 percent solids capture, which means very little is going back around for a second trip through the treatment plant. You know, if you have ever read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the things that they tell you in that book is that you should never handle anything twice. Okay? When, you, when something lands on your desk, you either deal with it, file it, throw it away, or give it to somebody who cares, but you try not to handle things twice. We are going for the same goal in the treatment plant with our filtrate stream. We only want to handle the solids once, and so we try not to send too much back around. This is a picture of a belt filter press, and this is a horizontal press, which is, in my experience, most of what I see out there in the field. This large tube that is coming up the side, or the pipe, that is actually the solids feed line. And this press looks really, really beautiful because it hasn't actually been used yet. This is a startup at a facility. There's a couple of things that you're going to notice. The little white squares poking up on the top of the press, those are called the plows, and they're actually upside down at the moment. Those are going to flip over and they're going to kind of ride along on the top of the belt. 
and they're going to help mix our solids that are on the belt to help the water drain better through the belt and to help evenly distribute those biosolids. There's a little red wire kind of running along the side of the press. That is the safety stop. This is a big, slow-moving piece of equipment, but it has a lot of torque. So you don't want to be getting too close or friendly with this thing if you've got your shirt hanging out of the back of your pants or if you are silly enough to do such a thing as wear a tie in a treatment plant because the, that loose material can get caught up in the press. And we have that safety emergency stop pull chain in the event that that happens. This is a totally enclosed belt filter press, and some people think that belt filter presses are stinky, they don't like them for that reason, but if you properly condition your sludge and you don't store it for excessive periods of time, you really should not have any kind of an odor problem. Folks that have odor issues, it's because they are storing the solids in a tank for a long time and they're letting them go anaerobic before they get to the press. That's not an ideal situation. Other people don't like belt filter presses because there is a loss of solids and a little bit of water over the side of the press. We typically build a berm around them on the floor to help contain all of that. And so those folks are going to want a totally enclosed belt filter press just because they want to try to contain the mess and minimize operator exposure to those finished biosolids. I personally don't think that the finished biosolids are a big issue because we're going to be meeting class B or class A if we are doing our jobs correctly and we're just not going to be all that worried about coming into some contact with the finished product. The way that a belt filter press works is it has a bunch of different zones. There's actually two belts on a belt filter press and what we're going to end up doing is sandwiching the biosolids between those two belts and applying gradually more pressure to squeeze those solids, pull the water out from in between what we call the interstitial spaces, which is the space between individual sludge particles. I'm going to show you a little movie of this uh, here in just a second, but you see the gravity zone. When the solids come in, they actually come in on this press. It would be the far left top corner of this diagram. They're going to come in at probably around 2% solids, maybe a little bit less, and they're going to have been preconditioned. We're going to have added polymer up front, and that first flat space is the gravity zone. The gravity zone is going to pull out a huge amount of water. You'll see it raining down in the video. And then when we get to the end of the gravity zone, the solids are going to kind of plop over the edge and they're going to enter the wedge zone. So the wedge zone is now we are, we're going to start compacting those solids between two belts. Then once we've got that sort of all loosely consolidated material firmly between the two belts, we're going to start applying more and more pressure in the pressure zone. And then finally the two belts will open up again and we will have our finished cake discharged out the back end. So again, we're going to go from about 2% solids up to maybe 20% solids. 18 to 24 is pretty typical for a belt filter press. This is a belt filter press video that I made actually at the Parker Water and Sanitation District. So you want to remember where this press is because it is a quiz question towards sort of at the end. Uh, you see the plows. These plows are black. The ones that we saw in the beginning were white. And what the plows are doing is they are mixing those rows. You can kind of see that they're offset. And they're turning them over. And what that does is it helps the water drain through the belt. By the time we get down to the end of the gravity zone, we are probably already up to 6% solids or more which looks pretty solid. It looks like dirt, but if you saw this and uh, took it in your hand, it would feel a lot like jello. It's actually not very solid at this point. Still 94% water. Okay, so moving into the wedge zone, and you can see the two belts that we're actually going to sandwich those solids together. Now we're going to start moving into the pressure zone. So you see we've got these big rollers here. You can actually adjust the tension on these rollers and on the belt. Uh, each one of these rollers has a big bearing on it. Those have to be, of course, maintained periodically. And you can see all of the water that is running down 
through the press, collecting in the bottom. Now we've got the two belts coming apart, and you can see that that biosolids, that finished cake, is pretty thin, less than three-eighths of an inch for sure. By the time we get to this point, we're at about 20% solids, and so there it is plopping out of there. Now when I took my A exam years ago, I had two questions on my A exam about doctor blades. The doctor blade is just that black stripe that you see uh, right between the press and the belt, and what it does is it helps remove the biosolids from the belt. That's all it does. So the doctor blade is that little piece. Just looking back along the press, you can see the high pressure zone. Again, this is where the two belts are coming apart, have our finished biosolids. Most modern presses are equipped with a wash system, and so we've got a little rinse water. This is removing solids and polymer from the belt. We don't want it to dry in the belt. And this is all the water that you can see coming down from the gravity zone. So a tremendous amount of water is pulled out just in the gravity zone, not as much in the rest of the press. This is pretty typical belt filter press performance. You can see the feed solids has a lot to do with how solid we can get things and whether we're using primary sludge, secondary sludge, which is waste activated sludge or our WAS, or a mixture of the two. If we're only putting WAS into the press, we're probably only going to get 18, 20% solids, 12 is a little on the low end, but that's about what we can do. If we're doing primary sludge, because primary sludge is not biological, it has a lot of grit and heavier materials, we can get a much higher percent cake solids, up to 32%. Most of us are going to be running a mixture or we're going to be just running waste activated sludge if we don't have a primary clarifier in our plant. And so we're, we're looking about that 20% finished cake range. How solid you can get it, of course, depends on how much polymer you add to the system. Now polymer, polymer is liquid money, so we'll talk about that a little more, but what you want to try to do is add the least amount of polymer possible to get the finished cake quality that you want. Okay? It's entirely possible to add too much polymer and then you'll produce a sludge or a finished cake that is sticky and doesn't come off the belt very well, plus you're wasting a lot of money. So there's always kind of the right range that we're looking for. When you get to the end of a section, there will be a little mini quiz. So you'll enter your name and your email address, and go ahead and start the quiz. The fine belt filter press shown in the video is located at this facility in Colorado. If you were paying attention, I even told you you needed to remember it. This is the Parker Water and Sanitation District Press. I'm going to go ahead and hit next for the next question. Uh, please select the word water from the list below. You don't have to get a minimum passing score on any of these little mini quizzes in order to get your training unit certificate at the end. So I throw in a question like this just to make sure that you get at least 10 points, which is the minimum passing score for each quiz that lets you move forward in the training. What are the plows for in the gravity zone? check both of the correct answers. So sometimes we have uh, questions in the training that have more than one correct answer. Uh, evenly distribute biosolids on the filter belt. Uh, yes, they do that. Uh, they add polymer at various points along the gravity zone. They do not. They prevent biosolids from falling off the edge. They don't do that. They turn the rows and furrows of biosolids and help water pass through the belt. Yes, they do. So those are my two correct answers. So I'm going to go on to the next one. This dewatering section follows the gravity zone and the wedge zone. That is going to be the pressure zone, so we'll select pressure zone. A belt filter press can reasonably be expected to produce a finished cake that is blank percent total solids. Uh, about 20% is reasonable. The closest number I have here is 18, so I'm going to go ahead and select 18%. When you get to the last question, you will not be able to select next anymore. You are going to just submit all, and it will ask you if you are sure. Yes, I'm sure. And when it submits those questions, it will give me my final score. 
If you want to, you can review the quiz by pressing the review quiz button. That will let you go back and forth and, and look at your answers to see what you got right and what you got wrong. Uh, when you're done reviewing the quiz, go ahead and go to results. There are a couple of other interesting little things that you can look at up here. Resources, if you click on that, uh, these are actually PDFs of the handouts. So you can download those and print them if you would like to. If it's myself giving the presentation, you'll find my information here along with a photograph. If it's another speaker, because I do have quite a few guest speakers who helped put this series together, their information would be up there instead. If you like this training, please visit our website at indigowatergroup.com for not just this course, but 44 other courses for water and wastewater treatment that vary in length between 30 minutes and two and a half hours. Classes are reasonably priced at $20 per contact hour and are approved for continuing education credit or training units in the states of Colorado, Nebraska, and Ohio. We're working to get them approved in other states as well.